The spacecraft that crashes upon the planet at the start of the movie is the ancient Earth. The spacecraft ends up landing in the middle of a lake after the crash, shocking the local fauna from the collision. Two humanoid creatures appear dressed in sophisticated spacesuits. As he passes out, one of them assists his friend in getting out of the water and experiences fleeting memories of the past. The spaceman discovers upon awakening that his friend has passed away from a serious chest wound. He hears a robotic call coming from a computer that is stuck in the lake in the distance. After saving the machine, the man queries about the planet they landed on in an unidentified language. Inquiring about the presence of other ships, he is informed by the computer that no records of ships in the vicinity exist. Following his disappointment, the guy gets ready for the computer to begin downloading and sending him a bunch of information about the planet, its species, languages, and culture, information that will be hard and terrible for him to absorb. He appears to get a second wind after that and uses a destructive cannon that survived the crash to improve his aim. He prepares a grave for his departed comrade at dusk. The Outlander's next task is to use only his pistol to survive in the unknown region, which is a large forest. During the search, he comes upon a dead whale's body adjacent to a deserted, damaged hamlet that shows evidence of an attack by a non-human entity. The Outlander realizes he is being watched so he runs away, only to be caught by a horseback rider, who renders him senseless and loses his weapon in the river. Outlander is brought captive to a nearby Viking settlement, that is encircled by a timber wall while unconscious. Young Freya and her father, King Rothger, engage in a sword duel in a huge hall. Freya informs her father that she will not wed Wolfric, her suitor and heir apparent. When Freya's father cuts her shoulder during the struggle, he chooses to heal her. When Wolfric appears, Freya becomes resentful of him and leaves because of his pretentious demeanor. When Rothger and Wolfric discuss how a nearby hamlet was destroyed, Wolfric informs him that during their inspection, they were able to apprehend a man who, although appearing to be unrelated to any recognized village, was captured. The villagers are shocked and make fun of their hostage, the spaceman. When they see him on exhibit, the man is taken to a hut by Wolfric to be questioned. When he asks the foreigner what his name is, he replies. Kynan. The men don't believe Kynan when he tells them he's from an island in the north, and is truly their hunting dragons, instead, they suspect he was the one who attacked the surrounding village. Despite Kynan's best efforts, the Vikings are too powerful for him to escape. Kynan attempts to break himself from his captivity by using a scorching iron bar, but Freya appears to administer to him as Wolfric asks just in time. At dusk, Wolfric informs Rothger that he won't comply, when he is questioned about the outlander. Rothger instructs him to locate Gunnar the leader of the vanished town, and clarify that they did not initiate the attack. Wolfric is hesitant to do this, because he still feels bad for Gunnar for killing his father, the village's previous king. However, Rothger clarifies that this was due to his father's recklessness, and he does not want to suffer the same fate. Resuming our conversation, Freya asks Kynan if he was the one who assaulted the community, but he replies negatively. Before continuing, Kynan attacks Freya and his guard after breaking free, trouncing him. Kynan attempts to escape in the middle of the night, and his strategy would have been successful, had not Sirens gone off signaling an impending enemy attack. Assuming it's Gunnar exacting retribution, all of the Vikings go into action. When they discover that nobody is outside, they are shocked to learn that the enemy has already entered the community. A tentacled monster hidden in the stables is the target of an unknown attacker, on a murderous and infernal rampage. As Kynan begins to pursue the beast, his guard also begins to pursue him. Later, the unidentified creature kills the guard by carrying him to the edge of the wooden wall. Kynan refers to the creature as, Morwan, the dragon he truly sought. The Vikings find Kynan before they attack, but they just tie him to a rock. There, Kynan experiences flashbacks, where he is regretting the loss of his people, and Morwan attacking his world. Kynan accepts a poor country boy's gift of bread the following day, although he does it warily. The men of the village attempt to determine, who might have started the invasion last night. As they bring Kynan to Rothgar, they question him about the alleged dragon he is pursuing. They are informed by Kynan that the so-called Morwan also assaulted his people, and that it kills creatures by luring them in with lights. He admits to having brought the Morwan to the village, but right before Kynan is put to death, Rothgar steps in to save him, saying he doesn't entirely trust his account. Kynan begs Rothgar to accompany them, knowing that they will be hunting Morwan, after giving him a horse and punching Freya for the earlier attack, the Vikings depart the village in search of the beast. Kynan rejects a meat offered to him by a smith named Buramir, spitting it out. In their chat, Rothgar warns Kynan that the hamlet would suffer the same fate as his house if they don't stop Morwan. When Wolfric reports multiple dead in the region and suggests that groups go on expeditions, 
Kynan thinks it would be preferable to stick together. Rothgar still likes to travel in pairs. A severed horse head falls to Rothgar and Boromir while they are examining. After discovering burned bodies outside of a cave, another pair discovers something hazardous. They all gather to enter the cave after hearing the terrified screams of the couple inside. They come upon a bear and engage it in combat, eventually subduing it despite considerable opposition. Kynan uses his sword to deliver the decisive blow during the struggle. Kynan defeats the bear and is let free when Rothgar chooses not to kill him. The town throws a feast to commemorate their win over the bear. Kynan reappears in the midst of the festivities, but this time he is dressed as the populace. He is taken aback by how enthusiastically everyone greets him and invites him to lunch with Rothgar. When the child who gave Kynan the bread shows up for supper, Kynan decides to repay him by giving him the powerful sword that killed the bear, but only if he tells him his name, to which the boy simply says, Eric. Eric's parents passed away, and Rothgar tells Kynan that they are looking after him. Wolfric challenges Kynan to a game of shields, which he has decided to start. Competitors must climb on several men, who create a square course with just their shields, then scrounge their way forward. Following a series of pirouettes, Kynan falls on Boromir, but instead of laughing, Wolfric gives him support, growing more confident in him, as the crowd applauds their new member. Kynan encounters Freya after exiting the vast hall, and she expresses gratitude to him for assisting her father with the mission. Kynan tells Freya that the Morwan, not the bear, killed her people and that it will come again at any time. Abruptly, Gunnar's Viking troop charges into the settlement, initiating an opposing onslaught. The two sides engage in swordplay, with Kynan and Freya each taking out a few adversaries. When Rothgar sees Gunnar, the king is knocked to the ground as Gunnar charges at him. Kynan appears to save Rothgar before killing him, but as Gunnar was gathering the strength to fight again, his men tackled him and took him away, declaring that they were defeated and that they should withdraw, before Gunnar's group departs. Gunnar curses Rothgar and accuses him of killing his family and people. As the tribe works to heal from the onslaught, Freya tells Kynan about Gunnar. Both communities harbor animosity among one another because Gunnar's absence from the gathering, which Wolfric's father saw as a betrayal, prevented the villages from planning an attack on the Franks years ago. Gunnar's group prepares to assault Wolfric and his people in the future. When one of them leaves the group to use the restroom, the Morwen that are hidden in the lake attack him. One by one, Gunnar's troops start to perish, thinking it is a surprise attack by Wolfric. When left alone in front of the beast, Gunnar chooses to take a fearless swing at it. A few of Gunnar's men emerge from the town, yelling and pleading, seeking to enter to escape death. But Wolfric believes it to be a trap, so he gets his archers ready to fire. Gunnar, having made it through the Morwen, emerges among the men and asks for assistance. All the guys are dead save for Gunnar, when the archers fire. After requesting that they cease their gunfire, Kynan opens the village's gates to the enemy. Everyone witnesses a number of blue lights engulfing a man in the forest, and then consuming him just as Wolfric is ready to strike Gunnar. When the blue lights turn red, the untamed Morwen emerges and flees into the forest. The presence of the beast is now known to all. In the Great Hall, Wolfric and Gunnar argue, with the latter saying that striking Morwen was equivalent to striking a stone wall. Kynan informs them that they have to set up a trap because they cannot defeat the Morwen in wide fields. Because Wolfric doesn't trust the plan, he tells them not to listen to Kynan because he isn't one of them. Kynan, however, lashes out, claiming that Wolfric is incorrect just as he was regarding the purported attacks by Gunnar and the bear. When the two try to fight, Rothgar breaks them up. The monarch declares that what Kynan suggests will be carried out and supports his proposal. The following day they resolve to construct a trap at the village entrance, and Kynan, for some reason, asks for combustible materials. They conceal a trench they dug several meters, below the surface as it was just another dwelling. Several poles with a variety of oils, are pushed into the ground inside. Once everything is in place, Rothgar makes Kynan one of his own by offering him a position in the village. A victim from last night awakens to find themselves surrounded by corpses, only to be killed by Morwen. When Kynan and Freya are eating stew together in her hut, Kynan has something to confess. In reality, Kynan's society and his people are world conquerors. When they reached Morwen's domain, they used bombs to eradicate its type. To establish dominance over the area, the last Morwens were hunted down. Turns out that Kynan was a member of a group of space colonists, who received a place on the planet to live with his family in exchange for being able to exterminate the Moonwars. Kynan had to go for a new mission after the conquest, but on his way there he discovered that one of the Moonwars, the same Moonwar that had slain the rest of the population, had survived and was hiding in the ship's ventilation system. Kynan reminds himself that he shouldn't be so hard on himself, 
after making that mistake. She also offers him her family sword, so he can battle more effectively. Now that Gunnar is on board, they can all get ready for the trap. Walfrick and Kynan step outside as the warriors open the doors and wait for the beast to come. Kynan tosses a torch into the jungle because they couldn't see anything, and while nothing was occurring, he discovers that the moon is directly in front of them. Suddenly, the village priest shows up, pleading with the beast to stop, saying it is an ambassador of Lucifer. Kynan and Wolfric begin to flee after he is brutally killed on the spot. They get past the water trap, and use the shields as a platform to cross over to the other side. Wolfric nevertheless tumbles into the water with the beast. The two are left inside when the warriors shut the doors, which exacerbates the situation. Kynan tries to hold Wolfric through an exterior hatch, just as the archers unleash their fiery arrows, and he succeeds in saving him in time to avoid the explosion. A fresh, smaller moonwar emerges from behind in the area where the women are hiding, surprising everyone with the explosion. Freya chooses to strike in order to defend everyone. Her father intervenes to save her, but after a brief battle with the beast, he is rendered useless. Not only that, but the first moonwar emerges from the fire even more enraged than before. Kynan and Wolfric decide to launch a joint attack but they are unable to defeat the creature. When Gunnar decides to assist, Moonwar quickly chops off his head and runs away. They rush to aid Freya as Eric seems to inform Kynan that there is a second Moonwar. Sadly, she is discovered clutching the lifeless body of her fallen father. The village as a whole departs the next day, out of fear of an assault. Eric expresses his desire to remain in the hamlet with Kynan, but Kynan informs him that it is no longer safe and that he must depart on a boat with the rest. He assures the child that they will cross paths once more before saying their goodbyes. When Kynan meets Wolfric, he reminds him that they must battle the monster together even if Wolfric is so dejected at the outcome that he doesn't think he should be king. Each of them recruits a couple of men to descend the shared well. It's the only way to locate the Moonwar's hiding place, despite the absurdity of the premise. Kynan urges Boromir to make new weapons promising to supply stronger materials this time. Kynan goes to the lake where his ship crashed with Freya and Wolfric in order to dive down and get certain things. A moonwar beneath the lake surprises Kynan as he manages to bring up a few topics. Upon reaching the surface, he discovers that Wolfric is the only one, remaining in the boat after it was destroyed, and Freya has vanished. Larger and more powerful than any previous blade, Boromir forges a new one. Kynan, ready descends the well and discovers an underground cave system. As he waits for the others, they start moving forward. When Freya awakens in terror, she discovers herself in a corpse nest full of monsters. One of the creatures discovers her as she tries to run away. Beast senses intruders before attacking, leaving Freya to pursue them. Kynan's party finds itself in a cave with a lava floor accessible. They are soon assaulted, and although they are able to locate Moonwar's lair and injure the tiniest specimen, they suffer severe losses including the death of Boromir. When Freya is able to stand, they both scream out to one another. When Freya senses danger just before going into a dark area, injured Moonwar emerges, he can no longer see her, and is now only aided by sound. When they finally locate one another, Freya almost has time to avoid the beast's onslaught since she and the men both make enough noise. Freya needs to pass through a hole to reach her pals, but it's too small for her. Desperate, they hand her the sword and she instantly kills the monster. When they get together, the number of dead in the cave seems horrifying to them all, rather than making for a happy reunion. They escape after hearing that something is approaching, and at the last moment Moonwar discovers its son's corpse, attacking warriors with a ferocious demeanor. They all arrive at the base of a waterfall situated on a precipice on a mountain. They make an attempt to flee, but it's impossible to climb the walls. Despite their best efforts, they fail, and Kynan has to save Freya from falling. In the meantime, the elder Moonwar attacks Wolfric, and in a fit of desperation, he cuts him across the face. While Freya holds steady, the Moonwar tosses Wolfric's body in Kynan's direction, leaving him to fight by himself. Using his sword, he re-enters the cave and, albeit missing a direct blow, cuts one of the beast's tentacles. Kynan follows the trail of blood, stumbling along the way. Freya appears to be assaulting the beast behind his back, just in time for Kynan to make a lunge. But the beast succeeds in pulling him to the precipice, where the Moonwar pins Kynan down as Freya holds him. The beast struggles, but Kynan draws his sword and chops off its hand, causing it to tumble into nothingness. When they both get back to Wolfric, who is dying, he asks if the beast is dead for good. They attest to it. Wolfric regrets not having become good friends with Kynan and presents him the pendant that makes him king. Wolfric is corrected by Kynan, who informs him that they are friends at the point of his passing. When Kynan and Freya reach the top of the cliff, they can see Eric and the other villagers in the boats down below. Despite everything, 
Kynan tells Freya he has to depart because he has to get to work. The two kiss. She is concerned because she knows Kynan might not come back. He truly returns to the wreckage of his ship, where he discovers that his wife was killed, when her capsule burst following the collision, leaving her in suspended animation the entire time. Kynan bids his friends farewell, and heads back to his computer, giving them a heads up to come look for him from the bushes. Freya observes as Kynan destroys the computer, eliminating his sole means of getting home. In the epilogue, Freya tells the story of how Kynan, who was formerly unknown to the people, became their new king, taking Eric as his adopted son, and Freya as his new bride. She also describes how Wolfric and Rothgar are buried, receiving the highest Viking honors for their deservingness to them. Freya ends by describing Kynan's sacrifice, stating that although he was sent by the gods, he chose to stay with them throughout his retreat.